Hello, welcome to Mark's Garage. Here you see my boring machine on uh, this 8BA block. This 8BA block belongs to Richard who lives around the corner and he's got the F1 pickup. Um, I'm boring the block for him. I've done these four cylinders, these are finished and honed and just lightly oiled. Um, I've also put some heli coils in on this side. There's one. There's one. And there's a couple over there, look. I've been using the boring machine and as I've been doing the job I've been making little improvements as I go along the way. Um, here's the one improvement. I've made this handle that goes on the top here to wind this screw because this machine the the nuts don't work here that rather the nut is permanently engaged in the drive mechanism you can't release the nuts like you should be able to but I had to make them permanently engaged because um, they were slipping so basically I, I when it feeds itself down I then wind it back up using this and as you can see it's a, a spanner that's been bent well it broke actually when I tried to bend it there so I welded it but it works okay um, I'm doing three cuts I'm going to 45 thou over and the bores are approximately 5 thou over already so I'm doing what is in effect a 20 thou cut then a 10 thou then a 10 thou and for the last 10 thou I put a new cutting tip in this is actually the last bore I thought I would go through it from scratch and show you how I've been doing it this isn't a how-to it's just something that might be interesting for somebody who's got a little bit of interest in this area bear in mind I'm self-taught I might be missing some tricks along the way but let's get that boring bar down through that bore that's what the bore looks like now uh, one of these only just about cleared up at 45 thou so first thing to do is to center it okay so this is loose so I'm going to wind the handle and lower it. I'm winding it clockwise. And can you see that it, the body is going down relative to that? So there's the... So I'm winding the handle. Rather, the first thing to do is to release the tool so, it, so it's not at the cut from the previous bore. That tool's loose. So there, I've got, just got the... Uh, cat's, cat's paws there now on this machine what you do you wind this handle clockwise like that you wind this uh, knurled wheel oh, I'll wind them back in up again can you see the things going in and out so they're going out now and what happens is they start to meet the bore and as each one meets the bore, it pushes the machine a little bit. So what you do, what I've just done, I've just, I've just um, checked that it's tight. So that's tight. What I do now is just check that the machine rotates around the cutting head without the cutting head moving. In other words, they are wound out. So that head is centred on the top of the bore, the part that isn't worn. So the machine is centred, but it isn't clamped down, so we need to clamp it down. OK, okay. that's clamped down then. So now after we... I have to retract the cat's paws. So I'm winding this thing 
anti-clockwise or counterclockwise if you prefer there you go I have to just press the thing at the top to get them to start so they're wound in so I'll uh, what I need to do is to wind it up so I'll, I'll turn the handle and wind it up so that's at the top and I'll get the tool in contention like that right this this is the one that locks the tool right so that's that needs to be up there at the moment here's my Michael Orometer so that has to engage in there what I do I get this tool that you use for tightening a lathe thing and uh, I just did you see that I just use that to push the tool out there so I, I kind of you're in the way okay right that's that's 3.2 and my first number is 3.213 so I need to go to 13 thou on there see that's 15 14 13 tighten it up take the thing off try not to move the thing because what I always do is have a really good look and check that it is you can see it's very 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 slightly over but that's okay it's only a rough cut and there's 3.1 and 3.2 is actually I think I balls that up that's 3.2 isn't it that's 3.2 okay let me check that then because I think I've gone a bit too small okay. yeah I'm um, 25 hours I think or something like that okay let's do this again yeah that just popped out did you see it okay so that's 3.2 Oh, that's 3.2. Oh, bloody, I'm doing it all wrong. Just shows I've been doing it all day. Okay, that's 3.2. So I need 13, 30, 5, 10, 1, 2, 3. So that I'm holding it up with my fingers. I'm holding that with my thumb and I'm pressing that down to lock it. And again, like I said, take it off without moving it have a look now you can see the 3.2 hopefully there's the 3.2 and then it's 15th hour round from there that's uh, 13th hour so that's 3.213 so I'll do I'll start it running Pausing to think, have I done everything? Everything's tight, yeah, I've set the tool. That's running. And I'm going to wind the handle to start it down. And when I hear the first little bit of noise, there, I'll back it off and tighten this thing on the side there. And that's cutting now. What I'll do, I'm going to wedge the vacuum cleaner in the bottom of the ball. Like that. Okay. Okay, it's going to be noisy now, so I'll speed up the rest of it. this brass piece that will come down and knock the switch off it turns itself off when it gets to the end
when it gets to the bottom it knocks the vacuum pipe out of the way there you go that's just turn itself off while it's while it's been running I've been pottering around tidying up okay so I'll, I'll wind it up and set the next cut okay let's see if I can do this one get it right this time I blame the fact that I was filming right it's 10 thousand more so it's 3.2 two three that's three point two two oh it's just glare isn't it that's so that um it'll go into place without hitting the end of the tool that's better wasn't in place properly then there's a little slide thing there that you have to slide to the end of the tool as well right three point two two three Okay, it just popped out a little bit. That's actually at three zero now, so that's too big. So there's three point two two oh two one two 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 three lock take off have a look three point two Two, three, slightly over actually, but it's all right for a rough cut. Okay, start machine. Wind down a bit. Next cut starting. Have a quick look, make sure it doesn't look massive. No, it looks okay. Can you see there? Oh, you can't really see it. I'm sitting with my naked eye, but I can't see it in the camera. What I was trying to say is that you can see the um, still the damage on the bore there, and that's 20 thou over. Or more like 25 actually. Okay, I'll get the vacuum started because it makes a lot of dust if you don't. didn't even notice it had stopped you know because the vacuum was running okay let's wind it up okay right now I'm going to change the tool change the tip well actually just turn it round because the other side hasn't been used yet that looks all right change the tip and I'll reset it for the last cut can't really see anything wrong with it but it just takes the very edge off it I'll put it, I'll turn it around right 3.233 Tool's miles away at the moment because obviously it's just been put in loose, hasn't it? Right, Allen key, right, locked, unlocked. So I've got to wind this back to three, three. That pushes on the tool at the back. 
Okay. So that's three five three four three three. Just gonna try and look from directly above. Yeah, I think that's okay. Lock. Take off without touching it. Double check. Three point two three three. Three point two. Three point two. Three point naught. Look, three point two, and then three, three. Okay. Set it running again. Wind it down. Lock the thing. There we go. She's cut in. Final cut. Final cut on this bore. Final cut on the engine. The last cut on the last bore, so that's good. Okay, I'm gonna have a break now because my camera's nearly flat. But when I come back, I'll um, withdraw the tool, withdraw the whatever you call it, the ram, the boring bar, and um, take this out of the way. I'll take a couple of measurements. I have, um, you, you might be saying, oh Mark, you ain't took any measurements. Well I have, I've been measuring all of them and I know what numbers to set it to for it to come out right. And that's a new tip, a 10 thou cut, and 3.233. Okay, I think, I think the lens had got some bits on it. So uh, what I was just saying is, this piston goes in there so I'll just go do a little bit of honing to get the exact gap that I want and I'm shooting for two and a half thou on this uh, engine straight driven engine not a racing engine to be broken in gently okay I'm gonna have a break now the camera's nearly flat so uh, I'll catch you on the next one cheers then bye a little bit earlier today I bored Richard's block for him and I spent quite a while honing. I didn't film it because to be honest my phone was on charge, it, it had gone flat. Uh, this one required hardly any honing, this one required a little bit, this one required a little bit and I had to do a lot on this one to bring it up 
to the size but I've got them there now and I've kind of moved on um, I thought oh I'll take my um, thread cleaning um, tap it isn't a tap you know a thread cleaner and run it through the threads and then I found that this one is all out of shape and oversize and this one is completely stripped so I thought well I will I've, already, I've already put three helicores on the other side so I thought I will fit a helicoil to that one there and um, I'm just looking at that maybe I just need to adjust it but I wanted to make sure I drill the hole square so what I did I put the drill in the hole there like that and I've stubbed this V block up to it I'm just going to redo that because I think I might have it a little bit off I thought I would just show the process of doing this helicoil at home without it all being set up on a milling machine or anything bear in mind I'm again once again self taught I've done this a couple of times but not very often Okay, so that is held, that's held tight against the drill. Yeah, that looks a bit better. So what I thought I would do is just use a tap wrench on the drill and um, wind it through. because you know it doesn't have to do hardly anything so with my thumb I'm holding it against the V block recording maybe I've gone in a bit hard with that haven't I? There's a specific there's a specific size for the helicoils. I can't remember where it is, but this is the drill that I bought to do the 716 UNC helicoils. actually okay. so that is drilled through now at the helicoil size so um and hopefully square to this which is square to the deck so let's see if I can get the tap in there as well then you know here's hoping I don't know if this will work but I'll give it a go oh that's moving in it that just moved in it that block that block just moved okay Oh hang on, this is bigger than the, uh, this is bigger isn't it? This is bigger than the drilled hole, of course it is. Mm, okay. 
Okay, let me have a think. Okay, let's get rid of all this. Right, now this here, right this here is a 21 stud pilot cylinder head. And I used this when I was doing a helicoil repair before. And this hole here has this thread down it. So what I'll do, I'll wind that thread down, I'll wind that down there. Well, I'll try to, just to clean the thread because it's a bit rusty. That's got that thread you see, but what I did, I put it on the milling machine and tap that. <coughs> so this thread is square to the cylinder head. All I'm concerned about is getting the tap to start straight. Okay, that's sticking through now, but I can more easily judge where that is. So it's around about there, isn't it? There, okay. So I'll wind it out. Let it centre itself. Okay, that's starting to tap now. I can't see any gap between them, so... What I'll do, I'll take it out now. So I've got interference on this bus. I've got no intention of using this head, but even with that hole tap like that you could actually run this head can you see that the thread has started in that hole now Okay, so good. Plenty of off. Okay. Right, let's have a look at that hole. So I'm trying to judge how deep those threads are. Quite deep actually. So let's say about three quarters of an inch. Here are the, here's an insert, 
and I will I'll shorten it back a couple of threads okay and I'll show you how I'm going to do it I'll show you this because I thought it was a good um, trick and I only did it yesterday but your natural reaction is to go into it kind of trying to hit the thread that you want to hit and then bust it off but what I found was better was to just go to the end there and just go zip through the next one zip through the next one zip through the next one until you get up to where you want but to just cut them off one by one and that's what I'm going to go and do now I'll probably take two two threads off okay I won't show you that because I need both hands but I'll go and do that so there's the helicor shortened now I'm very lucky that I happen to have this very snazzy super duper helicoil tool and that goes in there and then it's got a thread there at the end so you get going in there like that and you start winding and it kind of pulls it down into the right um, diameter then you just kind of line it up with the hole and wind it in and it's easier to get it started and what I'm doing now bear in mind I'm all self-taught on this I've got I no instruction I'm pulling up so that as soon as it clears this tool the tool will come away there okay now I want it in probably about another turn from there so that's half a turn that's a turn I'll go just another quarter of a turn okay here we are now I'm not sure how you're supposed to do this but I think the best way to bust them off is to just bend the bend the tag backwards oh, that's it the tag's gone now okay so here's a here's um actually a French head stud and that goes in there okay okay there you go that's the right size okay this one here is damaged as well you can see it's kind of there but can you see how wobbly it is so I was thinking I'd do this one as well anyway so there you are there's a helicoil repair there I hope you found that interesting and um, you know maybe you saw a little Id one or two little ideas that you hadn't thought of so and, you know obviously there's tons of ideas that I haven't thought of but uh, okay let's leave that at that then and uh, all good cheers then bye yeah I won't show this disaster Fuck it.